Hello Amherst Lasers. Today we're going to go over naming of vectors, adding vectors uh, that are at a right angle to each other. And so let's go ahead and take a look. I have a coordinate system with east, north, west, and south. And I have four vectors drawn on it of different colors so we can sort of identify which vector we're looking at. I'm going to start with this blue one in the first quadrant. And if you wanted to figure out the location of it, you'd have to measure the location of that vector from one of the axes. And there's two spots that make sense. You can measure up from this axis or down from that axis. And depending on which one you measured from, it would change the way you named the vector. Okay? It would change the way you identified it. And so if you're measuring up from the east, you would say the angle is north of east, because you started east and then you went a little bit north of it. So, if you're measuring this angle, you're measuring from the north to the east. You're going to the east of that north. So this is east of north. And so, one of the ways you might want to think about this, instead of saying east of north, you could say east from the north, and this would be north from the east. It does make a difference which one you put first, because this is measuring to the north from the east, and this is measuring to the east from the north. And so you do need to be careful which one those are, okay? So based on that, let's take a look at this vector, and what do you think would be the way to name that angle? This angle, well, hmm, you're coming from the north to the west. That's because you're to the west of north. And so that is west of north. And then coming up here, you're going to the north of west. So that would be north of west. Down here, if you are looking at this vector that's coming down here, you're going to the south of west. Okay, from the west going to the south, so south from the west, and here going to the west from the south. So that is west of south. If we take a look at this example, it is going to the east from the south, that is east of south, and this one is going to the south of east. So, I would not try to memorize those, I would instead try to think about what's going on in each case. Where are you coming from, where are you going to? This is going to the west, of, from the north. To the west, from the north. Sorry, north went to the west. And so that's how I would think about doing those, okay? Now, when we add vectors, we always got to add them tip to tail. So, Lancers, when you're adding vectors, we got to remember to add them tip to tail. So let's take the three vectors you see on the screen here. We have vector A, vector B, and vector C. If I wanted to add all three of those together, I can't add them like this because right now all those tails are together. I literally have to pick this vector up and move it so that the tip of the vector A is at the tail of vector B. And then I have to pick up vector C and move it so that Ooh, there. Okay, now it's being persnickety. Oh my goodness. This is fun. So it was... Well, let's just go with that vector. It'll be alright. We can get it to snap the grid. It doesn't look okay. Let's move this one. Yep, okay. So, now I have those three vectors. A, B, and C. And you know, I can move this, obviously. It doesn't matter where, but the important thing to notice here is that they're added tip to tail. So you have one at the tip of it starts to tell the next one, at the tip of it starts the next one. So your vectors always add tip to tail. And then if you want the resultant, the sum of all of your vectors, you have to go from where you started, your initial origin, all the way to where you ended. And so if I click the sum, this is that vector. And it tells you the magnitude, not the direction here, of that vector. Notice we have 10, 12, and 19 uh, uh, magnitude vectors adding to 19 
it was 19.9 added to a 19.4. Like that seems weird, but it's because you have to account for the direction, okay? So the length of this, if measured from the origin up to the head there, would be 19.4. And so when you add vectors, you have to add tip to tail. And if I move this tip, notice that the uh, tip always ends up. And here's another neat thing. It doesn't matter the order in which you add the vectors. I'm going to leave the resultant vector. They marked it with an S for the sum. And I'm just going to put these over here. I'm going to drag the other vectors out. And we're going to add them in a different order. Because you know what? It doesn't matter what order you add vectors. It still should add up to the same thing. Of course, it doesn't want to snap to that grid once you are at the edge of the screen, apparently. So I'm going to have to add them in this order. There you go. So it didn't matter what order I added the vectors. As long as they're added tip to tail, it adds up to the same resultant. Nice. Often, we're going to see problems that are in a very special case when our vectors make a right angle. If our vectors make a right angle, we can follow a few simple steps to solve those. And these are those steps. So steps to solving a right angle vector problem. Sketch your axis. Add your vectors tip to tail. Draw the resultant from the starting point to the ending point. Use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the magnitude of the resultant and use the inverse tangent to solve for the, the angle. Then you name the vector. So, <coughs> excuse me, six simple steps. You guys can get an answer. Let's look at this example. An airplane flies 50 meters per second due north, and a wind blowing 15 meters per second due east. What is the resultant velocity? All right, so the first thing I'm gonna to do to solve this is to sketch my axis, and I'm gonna think about this, okay? If I'm about to go north and east, I probably wanna start fairly far down to the south and to the west. That way I give myself plenty of room you want to make sure this axis is drawn fairly perpendicular and straight, that will be important. But this is my main axis, this is south, that's north, that's east, and that's west. If you're unfamiliar with those directions, we call this the principal axis. It's where we're starting all of our measurements from. Next, I'm going to sketch in my vectors, and I'm just going to hand sketch them. I'm not going to stress too much about their exactness. But 15 meters per second to north. And so, I'm going to go up due north. I'm going to label that as 50 meters per second. Then I'm going to go 15 meters per second due east. Now 15 is significantly shorter than 50. It's less than half. And so I'm going to make this vector shorter than the 50 to indicate the magnitude is less. So now I've sketched my two vectors. And so if you remember our steps, we've sketched the axis. We sketched our two vectors tip to tail, so we added them tip to tail. Now we're ready to draw in the resultant. And our resultant goes from where you started to where you ended up. So the resultant goes this way. Now, you notice I dashed it. And I did that because the students who are working by pencil don't have different colors. And so I'm going to recommend dashing your resultant so you always know which one your resultant is. Let's go ahead and figure out the magnitude of our resultant. We're going to use a Pythagorean theorem for that. So I'm going to have 15 meters per second quantity squared plus 50 meters per second quantity squared equals c squared. So that the magnitude of this has to equal the square root of 15 meters per second squared plus 50 meters per second squared equals c. You know, I'm going to go ahead and put that in a calculator. Let's see here. Can you see that? All right. So I'm just going to have the square root in, and I'm doing uh, 15 squared plus 50 squared, all under the radical. 
and we get 52.201532254. Huh, what should we do with that? We only have two six fix people, 52. So 52 meters per second equals C. That is not our final answer because we also need to get the angle. And I'm going to measure the angle here. Now, to get this theta, I don't like the way that theta looks, I'm going to make it prettier. My daughter would be proud. Okay, so I'm going to get that theta, and in order to get this theta, we have to use the Sokotoa, where the tangent is opposite over adjacent. If you don't remember how to do that, please go look it up or find a YouTube video on, on using trig functions and Sokotoa. Or uh, S O H so Toa. There's plenty of good explanations out there on that. I'm not going to go over it. But the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And so the tangent to the minus one power of the opposite over the adjacent is equal to our theta. So theta is the second tangent of opposite over adjacent. And so I'm going to put in here the tangent to the minus 1 power. Our opposite side is 15. Our adjacent side is 50. Did I forget to put units in? No. I simply realized that meters per second divided by meters per second canceled out. And so when you get your calculator, uh, if you're using a TI-84, you're going to want to hit mode and make sure you're in degree mode. If you're in radian mode, you're not going to get an answer that makes a whole lot of sense for us in this class. So we're going to make sure we're in degree mode. Then we're going to hit second tangent. That puts a negative 1 there. And then just 15 divided by 50. And we get 16.69924423. But we're rounding to two sig figs. I'm calling it 17. Now, how do we name that vector? Well, that 17 degrees went to the east of north, and so our final answer is, and I'll pick a different color, final answer would be 52 meters per second at 17 degrees east of north. Bada bang. Here's a new one. A 50 newton force pushes due south while a 75 newton force pushes due east. What is the resultant force? Okay. If you feel like you can do this on your own, go for it. If you want to follow along with me, that's fine. Just take notes and make sure you're able to do these on your own afterward. So let's go ahead and begin by drawing a principal axis. Um, I know this is going south into the east, so I'm going to start fairly far up into the left on my paper. I'll mark that is east, that is north. There you go, that's west and south. And I'm going to sketch our, uh, my two vectors tip to tail. So the first one is 50 newtons due south. And so, bada bang, that's 50 newtons I drew to the due south. Now, at the tip of that one, I must put the tail of my next one. That's 75 newtons due east. Out there, 75 newtons. So now I have drawn my vectors tip to tail, no 75 is longer than 50. I'm ready for my resultant. My resultant is going to come down like this. Right there. And I need to figure out the value of that resultant. Pythagorean theorem. So C equals the square root of 50 squared plus 75 squared. C equals... That is the newtons. I'm going to get the angle, the tangent inverse, the tangent of theta, sorry, tangent of theta equals my theta is going to go here, opposite over adjacent, 75 newtons divided by 50 newtons. 
If you're curious about where to put your theta, that sometimes does come up. It will always go in between your resultant vector and one of your principal axes. Now I didn't put it here because I wouldn't know the opposite or adjacent. Those aren't quite as easy to see. I put it here because then my opposite being 75 and my adjacent being 50 just makes more sense. So to get my theta, I can do the tangent to the minus 1 of 75 over 50. Again, the units cancel out. So let's see what theta equals. And that is 56 degrees. So let's go ahead and name that vector. My final answer is 90 newtons at 56 degrees to the east of south. That is vectors that are at right angles. I'm Mr. Collins, your physics, go and do great things.